Miss Akat Kusija Azubike. I'm a legal practitioner and a human rights defender in the city of Onitsha, Anambra State, Nigeria. I work with the International Human Rights and Equity Defense Foundation, IREF. IREF is an organization that centers on the defense of human rights, the preservation and protection of people's dignities and human rights. The current human rights situation in Nigeria leaves much to be desired because there are several cases of human rights violations and abuses by the law enforcement agencies, particularly the police in Nigeria. There has been various cases of extrajudicial killings, cases of subjecting crime suspects to torture, cruel, inhuman and degrading treatments, unlawful arrests, unlawful detention, and gross violation of human rights. The incidents also of abuse of human rights against women by the Nigerian police has become a recurrent decimal. At several instances, we have had cases of sexual harassment by the police against women. We have had cases of even torture, cruel, inhuman, and degrading treatment against women. We have had uh, instances where uh, the police threw tear gas and all forms of nauseous substances on women in order to quell their agitation or in order to intimidate or harass them. And we are saying no, that this is not what the law ought to be. Our society is not supposed to be a lawless one. And we are insisting that all these violations of rights must stop, must come to an end. So the situation is very bad. It calls for concern. And if something is not done urgently, then there could be a state of anarchy in the country. I personally have worked on a series of uh, human rights cases in Nigeria, and one of which I recently concluded is the case of one Mr. Chibike Ebue, who has a, a businessman married with children and recently he was arrested his rights trampled upon because his arrest was unlawful his detention was unlawful because it exceeded the limits that is provided by our laws he was kept in police custody he was uh, tortured he was beaten which is against the law because there's a presumption of innocence which provides that everybody who is accused of a criminal offense in Nigeria is presumed to be innocent until his guilt is established. But contrary to what the law provides, the police subjected TBK to all manner of inhuman treatment. He was kept in an unhygienic environment, he was beaten, he was detained, he was refused access to his legal practitioner until we intervened in his situation. He took up the matter with the police, went to court, and we got judgment in his favor. Thereafter, he was released. So this is just the most recent of the numerous cases that we have been handling. The government in Nigeria has a primary function of ensuring that police brutality and police violence is eliminated in Nigeria. The government can achieve this by taking some of the following steps. One, the criminalization of torture and police brutality. That is the first step that the government should take. The National Assembly in Nigeria should make a law that makes it criminal for any police officer in Nigeria to perpetuate any form of 
brutality, torture, cruel, inhuman, and degrading treatment against any citizen of this country. I also suggest that the Nigerian Police Act, which is in the laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004, be amended so that the extent of the powers given to the police will be clearly defined so that police officers will understand that the law does not give them the permission or the leverage to torture or perpetuate any form of cruel act against the citizens. Thirdly, police officers should be held accountable by the government for their actions. The police is under the executive arm of government and it is the duty of the executive arm of government to ensure that the police officers are held accountable for all their actions. Whenever any police officer is in breach of any of his responsibilities or goes beyond his powers, especially in brutalizing any citizen, he should be meant, meant to face the full weight of the law against himself. I equally suggest proper training and adequate training of police officers. I believe that if the policemen are properly trained and made to know what their responsibilities are, they will understand that they were not commissioned against the citizens, but against criminals among the citizens. Finally, I equally suggest proper orientation. The police should be given orientation that they are not in competition with the citizens and that they were not commissioned to work, to work against the citizens. So their mindsets, their understanding, their perception and perspective about their work needs proper orientation and recurrent reorientation so that they would remain within the ambit and the confines of their responsibilities as security officers. Police violence in Nigeria emanates primarily from the endemic and systemic corruption that is in Nigeria. The system here is very corrupt and it's as a result of this corruption that the politicians most of the times use the police to perpetuate injustice against the citizens for their own personal and private interests. Similarly, the wealthy people in this country have been in the habit of using their money to buy up the police. And because the corruption is systemic, is endemic, that has become the norm instead of the exception, it has remained. So I would say that corruption is the main source of police brutality that is being perpetrated carried out by the police officers in Nigeria. Another source of police violence in Nigeria is the insensitivity of those in government. Because if those in government who are getting the report of this brutality does what they are supposed to do, haven't been, elect, haven't been elected to represent the citizens, the incidents of brutality of the police and injustices meted out against the citizens will be curbed drastically. Different protests have been organized by different groups and one of the most popular of such protests is the end SARS protest that is going on in the country. SARS stands for Special Anti-Robbery Squad which is an arm of the Nigerian Police Force which is commissioned primarily to end armed robbery in Nigeria. But unfortunately, SARS has abandoned their core mandate, which is working to end the activities of armed robbers in Nigeria, and have turned themselves to all sorts of things, including debt recovery agency, which is not their responsibility. They are the agency that has the highest record of brutality and inhumanity, of torture, and all forms and sorts of cruel, inhuman, and degrading treatment in Nigeria. 
a lot of persons have been reported dead, haven't been killed extrajudicially by SARS in Nigeria. Cases of false disappearances perpetrated by SARS abound in Nigeria. And the citizens are calling on the government to scrap off that arm of the Nigerian police because they have turned themselves into a dear devil, killing citizens in their numbers with impunity. And unfortunately, most of the times, they have been proven to have had the support of people in government and in power who are using them to perpetrate their dastardly and devilish intentions. It is equally unfortunate and highly regrettable that in spite of these protests, police violence and police brutality and police inhumanity to Nigerian citizens has not reduced. Instead, the tempo has been maintained. And the reason for this is that the government who is supposed to look into this ugly incident have remained reluctant about it because of their selfish benefits which they tend to derive from this act of violence. At the moment, International Human Rights and Equity Defense Foundation, IRF, do not really have supporters. We are working within our, our means, what we can afford, in ensuring that we carry out our objectives, our core mandates, which is the defense of human rights. So we are calling on all concerned persons who are of means and who can come in to assist and aid the organization to do all they can to ensure that we carry out our core mandates to our target audience, which is the general public. Uh, the defense of human rights has affected me personally in that it has infringed or it has affected my personal time for myself. No more leisure time as it used to be before. The times you ought to have for yourself are no longer available because those times are spent attending to the needs of people whose rights are being violated. And it's usually a case that calls for urgency you may not defer for the next moment because if it is delayed, a greater harm or danger may have been caused by the indolence. So it has affected my personal time, it has affected my privacy, it has affected my leisure time. Well, um, I have not considered stopping because it is something that must be done. Despite the challenges, despite the discouragement, despite the confrontations, we are bent on ensuring that it is achieved because it is something that must be done. I, I am not uh, discouraged irrespective of the challenges we have faced because the defense of humanity to me is part of humanity. Because as the saying goes, the man dies in the man who keeps silent in the face of tyranny. So we cannot keep silent when we see the rights of human beings being violated with impunity by the police. And the reason why I'm not going back on this is because he who fights and runs, runs to fight another day. So we are bent on ensuring that violation of human rights is exterminated in Nigeria so that the society will be a better place for everyone. I'm advising everybody who is watching this video to be a voice against violation of human rights. Speak up against it. Stand against it in the little way you can. No matter how little you can do, because evil thrives because 
of the silent of the good and not because of the actions of the wicked. So in the little way you can as a person wherever you are at the sound of my voice, there is something you can do to ensure that the violation of human rights no longer holds sway in Nigeria, which by extension extend to other parts of the world. It is important to spread this news as a way of encouraging the preservation and defense of human rights. Spread the news so that others will know that people are speaking against it and they will also be encouraged to uh, join in this campaign against violation of human rights. My final word is that any society that does not respect human rights cannot move forward because the society is made up of human beings and when their rights are violated the essence of humanity has been taken away like i said earlier injustice anywhere said martin luther king jr is a threat to justice everywhere thank you